Your time is up, my time is now. You can't see me, my time is now. It's the franchise where I'm shining now. You can't see me, my time is now. What's going on today, my YouTube peeps? This your boy, Ghost Rider. Coming back at ya. It's Saturday. Sitting in this room. Anticipating Monday morning. Uh, the drive 15 hours down to Winter Haven, Florida. To look at this 2020 Peterbilt and his 2020 Kenworth. Uh, I was just sitting up in here and I just got to thinking, you know. Being a truck driver over the road. Whether you're contract, company driver, or anything like that, your mental, you've got to have a, a, a grab, a hold on your mental well-being. Because most folks think the hardest thing in trucking is being alone out here, being away from family. I say that's the second I think the most hardest thing is controlling this because when you're out here on the road, you got a lot of time to think, a lot of time to think. And sometimes you can overthink certain situations, especially if you start reflecting back on your life or you start reflecting back on current situations, that mind can really, really get away from you. And you've got to have the discipline and know how to control your mindset when you're out here. Along with, you know, being a safe driver, controlling that truck and, and driving for everybody else. Because we as truck drivers, we've got to drive for everybody else on the road. We've got to anticipate all their actions, all their moves. And that alone right there is stressful enough. And then you throw in your mind, get to thinking on different situations or or. Sometimes when life throw a curveball out, curveball at you, you know you get to thinking on that and dwelling on that, and really I got to thinking so much that you know when life throws a curveball at you, it ain't so much that the curveball hurts you, but it's how you handle the curveball, or how you handle certain situations, how you basically how you react. Reacting is key. Because you, whether you realize it or not, you have the ability to control what emotions you're going to allow to affect your well-being. I mean, yeah, sometimes certain situations can can happen and it'll really, really just want to make you want to just eat gunpowder and spit bullets. But really taking that approach, is that really going to help the situation? You know? Like I always try to do, I always try to find some type of positiveness. You know, it, there's so much wasted energy going on in this world until it's ridiculous. So I, I try not to keep a lot of negative energy inside. You know, I just I don't like that. I, I, why? Why? All that all that time when you look back and think about all the time you spent on negativeness, all that negative energy, all that negative thinking and stuff. You know, you could have been using that time to figure out, okay, how how can we fix this and what's the next step? Instead of, you know, yeah, okay, I, I understand it happened. You know, you can't do nothing about it. So the only thing left to do, because it's already happened, is okay, what can I do to fix this? And how can I keep myself from getting back into this situation? Uh, just like with well, my situation. You know, does it suck? Yes, I gotta be straight up honest with you, it does. I mean, is it hurting me financially? Yes, it's really hurting me financially. Uh, is it really making me rethink? Yes, it, it really takes me through those, those channels and those avenues. But at the same time, I'm constantly thinking, okay, what can I do to make this better? What can I do to prevent this from happening again? You know, just, just things like that, you know, positiveness is the key because it's just, like I said, once again, it's just so much negativity out here to let's protect. You don't even got to look for negative. It's, it's, it's like somebody I was 
a motivational speaker. I listen to a lot of Les Brown. Les Brown's a good motivational speaker. So you guys out there, if you haven't, if you don't know who Les Brown is, or if you haven't heard his story, he's a he's an awesome motivational speaker. And he had, man, when I say he's been through some stuff, he's been through some stuff. And it's just some of the key things that he says, you know, one of his favorite sayings that I use a lot is like, he says, when life knocks you down, try to land on your back. Because if you can look up, you can get up. I'll say that again. When life knocks you down, try and land on your back. Because if you can look up, you can get up. Feel me? We're all trying to win at this game of life. And especially as a truck driver, you know, you, you've got so many different adversities coming at you in any given day and time. And that's on a perfect day. We're not even going to talk about throwing in bad weather like rain or snow, you know, stuff like that. So, and, and it's just, it's, it's a given and every truck driver knows that we do not get enough respect out here. We do not get enough appreciation out here. And that's why a lot of times when I'm driving and I see kids in the car and, you know, they're driving by and, and they give you that old, you know, blow the, blow the air horn, I'll do it. And it makes me happy. It makes me smile. It makes me warm inside. Because I remember when I was a little kid, I used to do the same thing. I don't know what it is about that doggone horn, but it's just, it's just amazing to children. It was amazing to me when I was little. You know, just hearing that big old horn. Not only that, sometimes in different states, you know, there are some people I've passed by out in the state on farms and they've have signs out there saying, you know, thank you truckers for your service. You know, it, it just makes me feel good, you know, and I'm pretty sure it makes a lot of y'all feel good out there just to see that, that there are some people out there that, you know, appreciate us as truck drivers because to be honest with you, if we're not moving, the product is not moving. You know, I just wish that a lot of these shippers and receivers would take that to heart and show us a little bit more respect. But at the same time, on the flip side, we've got to do our part as well. You know, like when we come on their lot, on their land and stuff, man, if you got trash, keep your trash in your freaking truck. Stop throwing trash outside of an area. That's littering. It makes us all look bad. You know, uh, I don't know why I went that way, but back to I guess it goes along with the, the mental well-being the mental state of mind you know truck drivers man we're, we're stereotyped left and right and it's up to all of us to to disband that stereotype you know back back in the day a truck driver had all kind of stuff in his dashboard and he had long beard and scruffy and he took a shower and all that stuff but nowadays you know it's not like that you know and then and when people hear truck drivers, that's the first thing that comes to mind. We've, we've got we've to change that. We've got to do better before we can expect anybody else to do better. And not, only, not, not just being a truck driver, but just being a person, period. You know, treat people how you want to be treated. You know, uh, do things, you know, that's going to make a difference in life. You know, or a coach had said a statement, make yourself irrelevant, you know, in this life, because life is going to throw curveballs. You're going to have some good days. And you're going to have some bad days, you know, but it's up to you how you react to those good days and those bad days. Everybody can be happy in the good days, but, uh, what about the bad days? You know, there was, a uh, a young lady that was dealing with cancer on, uh, America's got, talent and she had made a, a profound statement that was so deep she was like why what did she say why wait till things get better to be happy yeah I think that's what she said why why would she wait till things get better to be happy you know and I thought that was just so profound with, especially with her and her condition you know dealing with cancer and then, you know, and, and uh, that's another thing, too, I think about, and you guys got to think about, too, when you're going through, there's always somebody else that's going through worse than you are. You know, there's still people out there that don't have houses, that don't have cars, that don't even have jobs. You know, and here we are in this, quote, unquote, great America. You know, yeah, sometimes, yeah, it's kind of messed up, but 
we still have it better than most people in the world, you know. Um, but yeah, your mind can really, when we're out here, man, your mind can get away from you real bad. I mean, the biggest thing is your mind will have you overthinking things. It'll have you looking at things in a different direction. It, it sometimes it your mind will fabricate stuff that ain't really that's not really happening or that's not really there. So you've got in this truck in this trucking world, or when you're driving, man, you've got to control that mind. And and then not only that, you think about it, we're in this truck 24/7. You know, sometimes I mean, and I have a bad habit of it too. When I get in the truck stop, I don't get out the truck. You know, if I do get out the truck, it's going, you know, the bathroom, take a shower, or go eat, and then I'm coming straight back to the truck. But what I've started doing now, sometimes I just get out and just walk around, or I just walk around in the truck stop. You know, just to break up the monotony of just being in the truck. You know, it's real easy. And then I, I picked up a bad habit. Y'all tell me if y'all picked up this bad habit. Every It's like now, every time <laughs> after I eat, I'm jumping in that rack to go to sleep. That's bad. You know, because you're not supposed to go to sleep on a full stomach. That is bad. And tell me if y'all are having it, if y'all do the same thing. It's it's like, it's now it done got to be where it's instantaneously. As soon as I eat, well, I'm jumping in that rack. And I don't know, it could be my driving style because I drive my clock. I drive a tight clock, you know, sun up to sun down. I'll drive it till, true. if I'm trying to make it to a truck stop, sometimes I'll pull it in a truck stop with like freaking five minutes left on my time, you know, and thank God I was able to find a parking spot. But that's how tight I run my car. The only time I, the only time I stop is really for my 30 minute break. That's it. Because you've got to manage, you got to manage that clock, y'all. That's the key. Got to manage and, and proper trip planning. You know, plan ahead. You know, know, know where you're going to stop. Know, know where you're going to end at. You know, uh, always try to stop an hour. Shut, shut your driving down an hour beforehand. Give that, leave that hour for you to find somewhere to park. Um, that way you're not running into a jam. Because a lot of times, depending on what, what side, what lane you're running, like I know on the East Coast, running up, you know, New Jersey, New York, you know, Man, it, it's hard to find parking past a certain time. And everybody, all you truckers, y'all should know, when it starts getting past, I say 2 o'clock, 2 o'clock, you, you need to be doggone trying to pull in, trying to find somewhere because between 2, I'll even go, I'll stretch as far as between 2 and 5, you need to be trying to find some place. After 5, it's, it's going to be some slim picking, trying to find a parking spot in a truck stop. Or rest area, you know, more more in the Midwest. Uh, well, well, I'll put it to you this way: the closer you get to this, the city limits, the more scarce parking is gonna be. Don't believe me? Try to find parking around Atlanta, Georgia. You're not gonna do it. You're not going to do it. It's horrible. Anyway, and that goes along with. Dealing with your mentality, too, because that way, if you already have a game plan, you're not stressing about that later on, you know? You know what I'm saying, y'all? I don't know. I'm just ramping and raving. I'm just bored, <laughs> ready to get rolling, you know, because this is, this is become something that I, I just don't want to do. I'm tired of hotels. I'm tired of Ubers. I'm tired of taking my stuff in and out of trucks. You know, I'm just ready to just get on a consistent routine with a reliable truck. You know what I'm saying? Y'all feel me? So, you know, hey, just wanted to come on just a little bit just to share some thoughts, you know. And, uh, oh, yeah, I did a little, I'm going to try, you know, beef up, beef up my videos because, uh, Basically, I just been shooting them raw to you guys. So I made myself a little intro. Uh, like, subscribe. Tell me if you like the intro. You know, and like I said, I'm gonna tell it to you straight, one on one, no sugar coat, nothing. You know, if it's a good day, it's a good day. If it's a bad day, it's a bad day. If they messing up, they messing up. I'm gonna let you know about it. 
And that ain't just in trucking, but that's just going to be, you know, on any other topics that we talk about. Uh, shouts out to all those that commented about the uh, the, the Kenworths, you know. I, and I promise you guys, I, I do go back and read the comments. It's just hard for me to uh, remember your names or whatnot. Uh, charge that to my mind and my heart. Um, but I'm going to get you down for all those that comment. I appreciate you. It gave me some insight. So I think I am going to try. Well, it all. Well, I take it back once I look at them because if that Kenworth is all nasty on the inside and look like it's just been beat, beat up and abused, I'm not going to take it. I'm going to be straight up honest with you because I, I, I'm a clean person. I don't want no, nobody else's filth that they just threw away. You feel me? And that's an oh man, that's another thing. I, I how, how can these truck drivers ride around in these filthy behind truck? The other day. I was delivering a load and I walked by somebody's truck and man, they had stuff all on the dashboard and then all, I mean, that truck was just filled I'm like, how can you drive like that? How, you, you've got to live in there and you've got to sleep in there. How can these truck drivers, these people drive in a filthy truck? And it only makes me think how they keep their house. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. It is so crazy. I just I just shake my head because I, I'm not the type of person. I like a clean truck. I keep my truck clean. You know, I like to keep it look brand new if I can. You know, even though it ain't brand new, I act like it's brand new. Because, well, it's brand new. I'm making payments on it, right? Y'all feel me? Y'all making payments on something, you're going to keep it up. At least that's how I think. Y'all tell me how what, how y'all how y'all do, you know, with your trucks and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, uh, like I said, once again, just I'll be leaving out of here Monday. I uh, got a 15-hour drive down in Winter Haven, Florida. I'll probably get there Monday night. Uh, to be honest with you, it'll probably be Tuesday sometime because the terminal is probably going to be closed and nobody's going to be there. So, and then that, it's the whole logistics of once I get there, then I got to go turn around a car and then I got to wait on an Uber to bring me back. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is when I get to Winter Haven, I'm going to take the rental car straight to the trucks. And I'm hoping, I'm really, really hoping there's keys or they're already open so I can go ahead and put my stuff in there and then maybe take the rental car back in the morning time and then have an Uber bring me back because I don't want to just go straight and drop the rental car off and then now I got to lug all my stuff in the Uber and then, you know, you know what I'm saying? You feel it. It's just, that's the only thing I hate about the logistics parts. I think there's, there should be a better job of logistically getting, excuse me, getting from A to B and whatnot. Uh, they, they suggested that they would they were gonna uh, fly me out, but I was like, no, nah, I got too much stuff. Uh, you know, microwave and a whole bunch of bags. I just, I just rather, even though I, I'm gonna hate to drive, but at least I know all my stuff is with me. Um, but yeah, I'll be uh, getting back with you guys. Once I get in Winter Haven, uh, matter of fact, what I'll do is when I get there, I'll, uh, I'll make another video on the truck I chose and when I'm in the truck. How about that? But like and subscribe. Um, if you're thinking about coming to Wells, come on and try it out. I mean, other than don't don't base your coming off of my mishap. I mean, you you probably come here and it won't happen to you. It's just my mishap is just happening to me. Um, but they they they're pretty they're pretty good on communicating and uh, they're trying uh, to be honest they're trying to fix this you know it's just unfortunate that it happened to me me wall of all people me yeah me like I don't understand it I don't know why and and then the crazy thing is why I keep breaking down in Ohio like I'm I'm looking like what's in Ohio am I missing something here in Ohio. Am I supposed to do something here in Ohio? Because every time I turn around, every time I make a run to come through Ohio, my truck was breaking down. Like, what is it? You know? 
I don't know. Maybe I should buy a lottery ticket. Maybe that's it. I don't know, man. Uh, see, that's what I'm talking about. See, being <laughs> controlling that mind. See, see how I just went there, just like that. It, it's crazy. But uh, all right, man. All my new subscribers. Hey, I thank you. All the ones that are still hanging in there with me. Hey, appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all, man. And like I said, if you're thinking about coming, hit me up. Uh, or if you're already set and you're and you're going, you know, and hey. If you want to use me as a reference, go ahead and use me as a reference. You know, my driver code is M-O-O-A-N-2. That's the contractor, my contractor code, M-O-O-A-N-2. Or, hey, if, if you're an independent contract, nine times out of ten, you're going to Oklahoma City. And you're going to be dealing with Dylan. Dylan's the supervisor over there. He's the head honcho over there for independent uh contractors so uh just tell them you, you been watching me on youtube or not you know or if not hey either or if you don't if you do you don't you know hey but it i, I think it's gonna be a pretty good company i, I really do uh so i'm not basically what i'm not gonna let this situation yeah the situation has got me hemmed up but i'm not gonna let it get me down i'll just right now i'm just in a little rut and I'll be a whole lot better once I get back rolling. All right. All right, y'all. Until next time, like I always say, peace out. My time is up. My time is now. now. You can't see me. My time is now. now. It's the franchise where I'm shining now. now. You can't see me. My time is